All right, so welcome to another video. What we're going to be looking at in this video is going to be uh, some basically some multiple choice questions, some true false questions, and these are going to uh, center around the most basic theory uh, related to activity based caustic. So, what we're not going to be doing in this particular video is any type of calculations, but we've got to get the theory down uh, or we don't know why we're doing. Uh, what it is we're doing in the first place. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, our handout. You may notice that I've got I have some uh, little numbers written out to the sides of the questions. That is not more than likely that is not a concern for you. Those refer to learning objectives. So unless you're in one of my classes uh, and uses the exact same textbook, those learning objectives may not match up to the textbook that you have in your class. So you can just uh, ignore those. I'm talking about uh, these numbers. Uh, let's see here. One, two, two. And I think in this, this video, I think in this particular video, all we're going to be looking at is uh, primarily learning objective two. There is one true false question about pertaining to learning objective one. Okay, so let's get started with that one. It is a false question. And so we are right up here. And the true false question says the 20th century saw an accelerating shift from traditional manufacturing activities to production procedures requiring large investments in raw materials and labor. Okay. So the, let's see here, we're starting off just fine here. The 20th century saw an accelerating shift from traditional manufacturing activities. That is absolutely true. Two, production procedures requiring large investments in raw materials and labor. Okay, so what I would tell you here is that they, they've messed this up uh, towards the end. So traditional manufacturing is very, very uh, heavily labor dependent. And so we were shifting away from labor and towards other types of activities that drive our overhead uh, costs. And a lot of these are, are fixed costs, uh, but not all of them. So, um, so it is true we've, we've moved away from traditional manufacturing, but that also means we've moved away from uh, labor uh, as the almost single driver of overhead costs. So that makes this a false statement. All right. Question two is also true false. It says activity based costing is a two stage method of cost assignment uh, that assigns overhead cost to key activities, then assigns those or sometimes you'll see the term reassigns those costs to products or services based on their use of activities. And this is absolutely a true statement. And, you know, one stage, two stage, um, there are multiple steps in a two stage process and it's not two, it's about five. So uh, the main thing is that is that you, you want to be able to uh, recognize that we're going to identify key activities that are driving costs. And then we're going to have to assign those costs uh, at some point. So we'll, we'll look at that uh, a little bit more uh, later. But that is a true statement. Question three, this is also learning objective two question says, which of the following procedures best describes activity based costing? Okay. So we've got A, B, C, and D. I'm going to give you a moment uh, to look those over. And if you need to, you can pause the video. All right. So let's think about this. We can actually go back up, right up to number two here in this true-false question. We can really just get our answer there. Uh, so this, this question here maybe com comes in a little bit handy for us. 
Uh, but our answer is going to end up being answer choice C. Overhead costs are assigned to activities, or as question two put it, to key activities. Because in activity-based costing, we don't we don't track the cost of every single activity, every single driver of cost. We just try to isolate the main ones. And what, what does that mean? That could be three things. It could be seven things. Um, it just depends on uh, how complex our manufacturing process is. But we're going to... Um, overhead costs are assigned to activities, and then those costs are assigned to products. That is precisely what it says uh, right up here in number two, and that was a true statement. Number four, an object to which costs are assigned is called a, pause the video if you need to, a cost object. So what is a cost object? It's anything to which we assign costs. So probably for the most part when you when you talk about what is a cost object you're going to be talking about some type of a product i have this product that i'm manufacturing and i'm i'm assigning cost to that uh, particular product however i do want to mention that you can assign cost to an entire product line you can assign costs to a division of a company. You can assign costs to a specific customer. And that's particularly important if you are in the service, uh, if you have a service-related business. And you can assign a cost object can be an entire business, and that would normally be done if you were uh, talking about a large conglomerate that has uh, a lot of different businesses under their uh, umbrella. All right, question number five says, the most appropriate cost driver for the activity of clearing tables in a restaurant is. Okay, so let's see here what they're, what they're talking about. What we're talking about, you know, we have a restaurant and they have a certain amount of overhead and they are trying to identify what contributes to overhead. So, you know, a restaurant is a is a service related business. We're not talking in any way shape or form about direct materials or uh food that is served. That's going to be a massive cost for us, certainly, certainly. But in this particular restaurant, we have identified We've said that clearing tables is a cost that is large enough for us to track, to get a better handle on how to uh, price our meals. Uh, restaurants, very, very competitive industry. Okay. So whenever we, whenever we say we've, we've identified an allocation base or an activity pool, let's insert that word here. We've identified an activity pool and that is clearing tables. So clearing tables is the activity pool. All right. So what drives that cost? Let me give you some very, very good advice. When you're answering questions like this, try to keep your answer as simple and uh, the most direct relationship. That's also, again, very, very simple that you possibly can. So go ahead and look at those answer choices. Pause the video if you need to. All right, our answer here, keeping it simple and direct, is going to be answer choice B, the number of tables cleared. And that's what we want to try to do. We find an activity pool, okay, something that causes cost to be incurred. And then we say, what causes that cost to go up incrementally? Well, the more tables we clear, the higher the cost pool for clearing tables will become. All right, uh, let's see here. Number six says, which of the following statements about activity-based costing is true? Uh, let's see here. So letter choice A says, the most widely used approach to activity-based costing involves the use of a two-stage model. Okay. Uh, activity-based costing involves tracing the cost of activities used by various cost objects. 
C, activity-based costing involves determining the cost of activities. And D, all of the above. Okay, think about those for a minute. All right, I'm assuming if you needed to pause the video, you have done so. And our answer here is, in fact, going to be D. Now, one more little warning to you. If you're in one of my classes and you get to the test, the answer is never all of the above. But what we do in practice like this is we go ahead and use all of the above so that you have three different, in this case, you have three things that are actually true uh, about activity-based costing. One other little thing I want to, I want to point out, um, and this is true just about regardless of whatever textbook you may have, uh, look at answer choice C. It says activity-based costing involves determining the cost of activities. If you have a foundational uh, sophomore level accounting course, you are probably going to be provided that information. Okay, so we might have our we might have our total overhead, and let's say that we have identified uh, you know five activity pools. You know, clearing tables is one of them, and then we have four others, and then we've broken that down. So we might say, okay, uh, you know, our total overhead is three hundred thousand. And I think 30,000 of that is going to clearing tables. Somebody's doing that math. You are unlikely to have to do that. That's information that's usually going to be provided to you. All right, question seven says, I think we've got about nine questions in total for this video. So we're getting close to the end. Bear with me. In a two-stage activity-based costing model, stage one involves. So... If it's stage one, you need to be asking yourself, what is the very first thing that we would do? So, you know, you can look at a question like this and you can say, okay, just logically, if you know anything about the subject matter at all, you can say, okay, wh which one of these would have to be uh, first? Okay, and so let's see what we've got here. We've got a cost to cost objects. Assigning activity cost to cost objects, uh, measuring the various indirect resource costs and determining resource drivers, uh, assigning indirect resource costs to activity uh, pools, and finally assigning uh, direct cost to cost objects. Okay, so take a moment, look at that. Our answer here is going to be answer choice C, assigning indirect uh, resource costs to activity cost pools. So let's look at something else for just a moment. I wanted to show you a particular couple slides here. We've got our cost of resources. These are items that are not prime or direct costs, we assign those to activity pools. And this is, our, in fact, our stage one. Okay. And then at some point, you know, we can look at, I uh, wanted to give you this little slide here as well uh, so that you can make a screenshot. What this says up here, let me move my face for a minute. It says uh, ABC product costing model steps. And here are the five. So the stage one is identifying the key activities, not all activities that uh, cause us to incur resource costs, and then assigning those uh, costs in total to uh, those relevant key activities. All right, so that's stage one. And so one other little diagram I wanted to show with uh, share with you uh, was this one here. I'm going to have to kind of move myself again. You know, we've got our overhead here. Uh, this looks like something like $370,000 in, in total estimated overhead. And then, um, so we would start off with that grand total of whatever that comes out to there. They, we don't have a running total down here. And then we've said, okay, here are our cost pools. These are all of our key uh, items 
that are big enough to make a difference. So we've got purchasing materials, handling, production setups, inspection, assembling, and maintenance, uh, machine maintenance. And then so we've broken out that total amount of overhead into pieces. Now this requires a lot of work and this is something that you would not probably have to do. Um, but that's what we're talking about here in stage one. And there it does get uh, a little bit more uh, complicated. So uh, that's what we're doing in stage one. All right. Number eight says, which of the following tasks is not required when using a two-stage activity-based costing model? Okay, so what are we uh, not doing? All right. Our answer is going to be answer choice C, determining how much direct labor uh, each cost object consumes. When we're talking about activity-based costing or traditional costing, as soon as you hear that, what we're worried about is overhead. And direct uh, labor cost is a, is a prime or direct cost input. So we're going to worry about it. It just doesn't have anything to do with our uh, overhead application uh, method, however we choose to do that. Okay, materials and direct labor are just uh, uh, caught we uh, add immediately. And it's this one right here. Try to get the paper uh, straight. It says, number nine says, in an activity-based costing model, total costs assigned to cost objects may include, okay, only direct cost, uh, both direct cost and resource cost, both activity cost and resource cost, both direct cost and activity cost. Okay, so this, you know, go ahead and pause the video if you need to and then look at this. I'll give you a second. All right, so the answer is going to be Answer choice B, we have to always account for our direct costs of materials and direct labor. And then resource costs, resource costs is another way of saying uh, overhead costs. So we'll keep that simple. This video is approaching 20 minutes, so I'm going to cut it off now and then we're going to come back and look at some more questions.